watching them or at least uh, noticing them. But then they make these extraordinary exits that really get your attention. Wow. Uh, that's fantastic. And they maneuver relative to one another, which all but precludes the possibility that they are drifting with a prevailing wind. If if balloons were in proximity to one another and drifting with the wind, you would expect that they would not move very significantly relative to each other's positions. Yes. And so. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's a very interesting phenomenon. And if any of our listeners would like to do a little investigation on our website, ufocenter.com, I would encourage them to go to the data, go to the database which is organized by the state in which the event was reported, and go to the uh, state of South Carolina and just scroll down the one-line listings, one-line descriptions of a longer report for each of them, and you will see frequently a heavy population of reports of these orange or red or yellow lights. And I would say that South Carolina, for whatever reason, is probably most heavily represented by this type of report of all 50 states. And Isn't that interesting? Uh, yeah, South Carolina. Huh. No explanation for it. And the interesting thing is many of these reports is, can be seen from the written reports are suggesting that the objects are seen out over the ocean to the east of South Carolina. So it all but rules out people releasing so-called sky lanterns or Chinese lanterns. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Very Plus the... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Peter, but the prevailing winds uh, seem to be going east uh, out over the ocean as well, right? So this would be going away from the, the prevailing winds if they're coming in from uh, the Atlantic. That's interesting. I probably should have looked into that point, Michael. I can't certify that what you say is, in fact, the case. It probably depends on the time of day. During the daylight hours when you're warming the the ground, the wind generally sweeps in from the ocean. Ah. But you are correct in the sense that most of these reports from South Carolina are evening reports, in which case you are correct. The wind would be moving away from the land mass out to sea. Yes. Which is, uh, it makes it even more interesting. Well, not all of these lights are red or orange or yellow, as I've reported. Over the last several months, as I think I've reported on Night Dreams Talk Radio a time or two at least, we're getting reports of green and blue lights. And the next report I'd like to share with our listeners comes from just a few days ago, the uh, 30th of January, 2019, so Wednesday of this past week, uh, two witnesses in Hazel Township, Pennsylvania, which is northwest of Philadelphia, about 40 or 50 miles, I believe, were standing outside eight minutes past midnight on Wednesday morning, and they saw six or possibly seven green-colored lights hovering motionless in a straight line from their vantage point, hovering motionless in the morning or night sky, and they, the line of lights was tipped up a little higher at the eastern end. They were looking at them in the northern sky, so they were facing north. And the two green lights on the ends of the line of six or seven were brighter than the rest of them. And uh, they go on to... Uh, they, they took a photo, but they didn't show up very clearly in the photo. We're waiting for the photo to post it to our home page but they suddenly accelerated and disappeared at what the witness calls very high velocity and flashed out and it as they streaked off they left a green trail in the atmosphere we should have all of these reports posted to our website sometime tomorrow so if people would like to read the original report they'll be able to do so but 
Wow. Yeah, that's Hazel Township in in Pennsylvania. Amazing. One one thing the uh, witness adds is while he was looking at the six or seven lights before they accelerated, both witnesses viewed they saw a green fireball in the sky, which at first they ta- thought was a uh, meteor. But upon further consideration, they're wondering whether it might have been a seventh or eighth green light. And one other facet that I didn't mention is as they were watching these green lights, they noted that small, tiny specks of light appeared to them to be going up from the ground level and joining the objects up in the night sky, the green objects. Oh, this my is true, goodness. It's an astonishing report, and we're going to try to get more information on it. So, oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, that'll be something to look forward to. Uh, those will probably be posted in the next day or so up on uh, um, ufocenter.com, so everybody's got to check that out. Yep. Uh, we should have it posted. I initiated the posting of it last night, Friday night, but uh, suspended it. I stop, had to stop the presses. I'd made a few egregious errors in my proofreading of the database. <laughs> some of the new reports so I appealed to my webmaster to cease his efforts and we'll have it done sometime tomorrow, Sunday, I hope you know, and that just points out, Peter, how many hours and hours you end up spending uh, sometimes to get some of these reports just in readable form because I know how people text them to you and email them to you. They're very cryptic and sometimes hard to read. So thank you for all that hard work. Oh my yeah, gosh. I, what a I job. A compliment. I must devote, I suspect, 100 hours a week to seeing to it that this material is collected, first of all, and also made public so people can, those people who wish to know what's really going on, as opposed to what the government wants us all to think is going on, will have access to good, accurate, reliable data. That's my objective. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, you're putting in two and a half weeks of work in one week. Let's put yeah. it that way. At 40 hours a, uh, a work week, that's uh, that's amazing. And I know that you don't get a lot of sleep at night. I'm, I've been in hotel rooms with you, Peter, when we're on the road, and you're answering or at least checking in on your mobile phone with the hotline uh, all night long almost. And I, I just think it's amazing. So thank you for all that you do for ufology and to get the truth out for sure. We're going to give you another plug at the end. At least I'm going to do that to see if anybody would be interested in sending a few bucks your way uh, to your, uh, your PO box in uh, Harrington. Well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate your support and, what I would like to know is whether people ever really read <laughs> the reports that I post. I sometimes feel like I'm talking to a brick wall. And yeah. if there are people out there who read the reports routinely, I would welcome an email, just a one-liner, oh. uh, letting me know that people are actually reading the material. But if we have a few more minutes, I've got a couple or three more cases that I'd like to share briefly with our audience, Michael. Yeah, yeah, let's go to uh, 7.30 on this one. That'll be great. Okay. The uh, last report, of course, was from Hazel Township, eight minutes past midnight, Eastern Standard Time. About five and a quarter hours later, in Kenilworth, New Jersey, not far from Pennsylvania, of course, a uh, gentleman was out admiring the morning sky he apparently is a seasoned sky watcher he's familiar with the moon of course and with the planets and where they are and some of the prominent stars like Sirius and Regulus and so on he writes that at about 5:30 a.m. on the 30th Wednesday morning of this past week he was out admiring the celestial bodies in the morning sky very clear sky he writes and he just happened to look up above him and he saw two stars that appeared to be out of place he's familiar enough with constellations and stars to know that they were not stars that he was familiar with at any rate 
And as he was looking at these stars, trying to identify them, one of them, he writes, started conducting or flying, making figure eights around the other star. And he knew immediately that he was looking at something odd. And uh, the whole sighting lasted less than a minute, he reports. That was in Kenilworth, New Jersey, Wednesday morning. Uh, Yet another report I'd like to share comes from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, A single, unfortunately, a single observer saw three distinct, solid white lights in a triangular formation move across the entire sky in about one minute, the witness estimates. Now, I don't know what those lights were. There's uh, a degree of uncertainty as to whether they might have been the so-called Chinese naval surveillance satellites that fly in a triplet in a triangular form, that is, in a triangular formation. I have yet to uh, Uh find that data, but uh, I'm receiving so many reports of this nature. Lights of all different colors flying in triangular patterns that I thought it was worth a mention on the program tonight. Yes, definitely. Uh, one, One last report I'd like to share comes from Seattle actually. Ah. This was Thursday morning, the 31st of January, at 4.30 in the morning, Pacific Standard Time. A gentleman was outside looking at the morning sky. He was very close to Magnolia, which is not far from the downtown area, as you know. And he saw nothing, none other than a bright blue orb that was hovering motionless in the western sky from his vantage point. An airliner passed very close to it, from his vantage point at least. It looked as though they were almost in conjunction. And after the airliner had passed it, the blue light, the witness writes, suddenly accelerated and streaked to the east, going directly over Seattle and disappearing in from the man's sight. The whole sighting lasted about five minutes. Most of that was taken up by the object just hovering motionless in the western sky. So, Wow. Can you imagine that? There's a lot that, going on. That is over at Magnolia in Seattle, a very populated area. Yeah. But yeah, the unfortunate thing is most people, of course, would be in bed at that time of night or indoors doing something. But the real tragedy is probably the overwhelming majority of citizens would look at something like that, even if they saw it, and they would just discount it. They would purge it from memory. They would never think to report it. And it's what leads me to believe that my estimate is that out of 20,000 people, 20,000 adult, competent, clear-thinking people with normal sensory perception who saw something like that, would never report it. They Amazing. Say that's unusual and uh, just move on with their the rest of their lives and say nothing about it. So, so in other words, you're saying maybe one in 20,000 would report it, basically? That is my estimate. As radical yeah. as that may seem to our listeners, yeah. I estimate that out of 20,000 adult Americans who see something that they sincerely believe was a UFO, only one of those 20,000 will ever pick up the telephone and try to find somebody like me to report it to. And uh, it's probably a good thing that we don't get all those reports because I'd be a dead man by now if I were getting 20,000 times the amount of data I'm currently receiving. I was just going to say that. Oh, my gosh, Peter. Uh, and if you are just dealing with the tip of the iceberg, can you imagine how many sightings are actually made out there on a nightly or daily basis? Yeah. And we need to then definitely give people now the uh, UFO hotline for the National UFO Reporting Center so they can write this down because this is what they need to do when uh, when they see something is give you a call. Yeah. 
I'll give them two bits of information. One is the hotline, the other is our website. The hotline telephone number is 